to I don't know, talk about <laughs> uh, the work I was doing towards uh, trying to sort out um, digital x-rays. I went into it like really naively. I thought I could trick Duncan into believing that to do some work and just say, hey, I'm going to do a data management plan that sets out what we do with our digital x-rays, basically document what we were doing and then tick that tick box. And the, my idea was that um, like where we have project-based data management plans, um, I wanted to support them with technique ones, be, uh, so we're calling technique-based data management plans because every time you get to do a project one, you have to make those decisions over and over again. So I wanted like documented. I decided, right, let's do that in a data management plan and everything will be great. And um, there we go. And so it's been a little while since we um, moved to digital. And unfortunately, uh, the move to digital X-raying is kind of driven um, as well as like making you hit the data more accessible to yourself, so you don't have to get up from your desk and that kind of thing. It's the same as film, like uh, the commercial world is starting to move away from it. So the medical world and uh, industrial um, x-raying for engineering purposes is moving to digital. And so we perceive in the same way like film will run out of film or film will get more costly. So we also moved to die. Um, to digital, uh, we moved to digital X-rays about uh, well, it feels like it must be about five years ago now because it's pre something time before pre uh, before the pandemic that bit, and um, so we moved to Dicond files. I think the internet tells me you're supposed to pronounce it Diconde, but I just can't do it. I'm too English, and um, you can get two file types: Dicom, which is the medical files, and Dicond. Now, and Dicond, uh, so medical x-ray files were the originals and Dicond is a like a subset of them has a different metadata template and it can do stuff that I don't understand like it also can take information about XRF and XRD um, and what else do you need to know? Uh, that was meant to do, 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 that's it. So both those file formats, so digital x-rays, are made up from the data that's created from when you zap the object. Um, you perceive that as an image. There's a metadata template within that file, just like there is in a, um, a photograph. So it has uh, metadata in it that's uh, uh, already like machine created what machine did it, some of the, only some of the parameter files. But then that file also has like a functionality that say a photo won't have. And that is that the con uh, conserver to can play with, to which you and me would, I suppose I'd call it the contrast, but they call it the dynamic range. So they can see different parts of the dynamic range and then you can, and they can play with that without damaging the file. Um, so you can do see different parts of the X-ray, and it, so it reduces the amount of X-rays they need to take. Uh, so they before we would have to zap it at multiple different types of kilovolts, and now they they still might have to take two or three of a very complicated object or a very dense object, but uh, they have reduced the amount that they get to take. So hooray! <laughs> few files down um, and it also has functionality in the in the file to be able to label it so that was uh, we'll get onto that but that was supposed to reduce the nightmare of white pens <laughs> so that uh, so you could label you know you could do little boxes around your little groups of objects or the parts of objects and then put your object number in it so where you squeeze tons of coins and that kind of thing onto an x-ray right that goes blank apparently so Four minutes in. Right, so quickly then, <laughs> next one. So this is my flow line for plates, glazes over the um, nightmare that is the white pen, because I could just do like a big mess in the middle. Ah, white pen. And then, um, but what you need to know is it's nice and simple compared to the next slide I'm going to show you. The, the plates, uh, the purple uh, things are the the objects you might create. So the plate carries on being the plate. And then in the later days of X, uh, film X-raying, we were scanning them for, uh, put, you know, put them into publication purposes and that kind of thing. And they were sort of, a, you had to create an X-ray documentation and then you translate that into an X-ray project, X-ray index. And we have to keep a certain level of metadata for to know that, so who's nuked who when <laughs> um, uh, for health and safety purposes. So we always have to hold a certain amount of documentation for 70 years. And then, so that's flow lines for plates. And then that's what we started doing. So um, we've got too much orange. They're all the metadata products. I've got too many metadata products. And also I haven't really given them any consideration whatsoever. So we haven't considered uh, the relationship between the, uh, uh, repository metadata and what we're going to record for the what we're going to record for describe the files we might create from a, a digital file that um, 
we haven't worked out what we're going to do with the DICONS metadata and lots of questions there and we really haven't even sort of reviewed the project based uh, x-ray index and what that should look like and what's really missing so I'm going to do it. What really missing is from this, uh, what they're doing is really like a time to consider selection. And um, so I gave myself a C minus <laughs> and, and told myself to try harder. Oh, and the other thing, of course, is that I don't. Like, so since I started like work on this um, at the time, uh, the ADS were didn't have uh, digital X-rays on their uh, as part of one of their preservation files, but now they do. So it's hopefully it's just a hop and a skip. So now they're taking medical x-rays and hopefully it's just a hop and a skip to uh, taking on the industrial ones as well. And I think I can just sneak them in because they're the same file extension. <laughs> and um, um, uh, so this is what I was aiming for. Um, so moving on quick. So just a lot less orange, lots of consideration. Um, and we're all sort of like uh, in our responsibilities and our procedures, we're all like embedding selection. And so hopefully I don't have to go through this. So I thought I'd better just quickly show it. There are like sections of comments that you, uh, the sections that you might review in a data management plan. For a technique based one, thank God, you don't have to look at all of it because some questions are very project specific. So in a technique one, for x-rays anyway, you haven't really got to worry about ethical because um, you haven't x-ray the human bone is part of this it's just what you're going to do with your data generally so so go straight on to data selection um, data sorry collection and so file type that was easy i've already done that dicont so um, and uh and we had a folder structure already in place it works as a collection and then the idea is at the end of the project the x-rays are select uh, pulled over and then put into the project archive there's probably no getting away from the conservators keeping a collection of the x-rays. Um, anyway, but at least then they go into preservation file in case anyone ever deletes all our servers. And then, um, and then the file name convention is based around the plate numbers. And so they have a unique number and uh, I can add a, a prefix to it as it goes into the archaeological archive ready for deposition. So that's all working well. Version control, because of that ability to play with that one file, there isn't really a need Frankly, to create too many versions of the DICON file. You should just be working with one. So we're sorted there, and then it starts to fall apart. So we get on to um, data sharing and uh, quality assurance, all sort of get mingled into one. So the quality assurance on a digital X ray, uh, on, on an X ray, would be done with this the tungsten image quality indicator. And um, the software that we were using came with like a you know, promises that it does export. So it does export to a, a TIFF of the raw image. It does a, a PDF export, which I don't really like, which is like, multi, it's like a report. Um, so it's got multiple copies of the X-ray in negative and positive, and then a metadata table at the end. Um, it doesn't really have a much use to us. Um, then we thought we were doing brilliantly because we were thought then it just exports to JPEG and TIFF and you can have, you can play with the image and you can put the annotations on or off and uh, take whatever pitch you like. And I, uh, yeah, and that's when I started to put, reviewing the data, found that actually that's creating a really small file. So when we get onto data sharing, it's starting to uh, impact on, the, uh, in the, on our ability to share the data. And you can see that in the next file. So instantly then your quality assurance, if, you can't, if you're exporting and sending a file off to someone, it's really low quality, another conservator, they um, uh, cannot, or no, a, you, maybe your fines person, sorry, is a better example, because they're less likely then to have the same software as you, the, the specialist software, then they then, uh, your ability to uh, un understand the x-ray is falling apart because you can't read your tungsten image quality indicator and then that is this is the impact then on the objects that low resolution that the exports at has and really yeah so what it's doing is like a screen grab and I think we hadn't really sort of noticed before because when we condense the images down into a report, you're uh, increasing the dots per inch and therefore it's such a low quality res uh, resolution when you put it into a report anyway, like a low quality image, you don't really notice that the, um, the, uh, that, um, yeah, that the quality is bad. So we've been using the software and looking at the main file, sometimes exporting to produce a figure for a report. And, um, and then we've started to realize and for data sharing, 
and getting high quality images out we're starting to uh, you know, really struggling and so um that's oh, oh, ah, 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 ah. Um, so that's a, a now tip and then I was like oh well, well I suppose we could go completely nuts and then like zoom in on each object and I was like oh yes but of course not every object is a nail so here's the measurement on a nail and there's the measurement on the bowl and so um, yeah so then at that point then you're just going into madness potentially of <laughs> taking a bowl to try and get high quality uh, parts of the object over to someone who can't view it. Oh, so um, that led uh, the issues that were starting to come up which started, led us into saying well even like reducing a surrogate from a file is just like a, just in a pain really You're just creating lots and lots of files so we looked into the potential for free viewers they are all based around the medical and so um, there's only I could only find oh, more now but they I could only at the time review DICOM and image J and Radiant is, has a cost uh, so but there wasn't yeah there weren't that many we thought, oh yeah free viewers and then no there's not that many so and that left us with um, continuing just uh, different issues and so yes the middle one is what we picked because you can freely change the contrast and the brightness or the dynamic range to view the object to see different parts of the uh, uh, the uh, the image but and the other two would only allow you to play with it with regards to medical presets so you're looking for cancers and broken bones uh, and so they uh, they were like no good then this is when I was like oh excellent it's sorted it's sorted it's sorted and it's not sorted because it turns out that that the annotations do not transfer over so they're in a I'll get into uh, language I don't really understand, a private tag related to the software that we've been using. So it sits within it, but then the external viewers can't view it. And so I got to the point where then if your preservation strategy or your data sharing strategy is to produce a high quality image, you can use these. But we're back to uh, then producing a low quality screen grab that basically acts like the envelope did. So we're creating a, a raster to support the thing so we can share the data and everyone knows what they're looking at. So I'm not very happy about it. Um, so uh, and I'm hoping there's ways forward and I'm just going to have to carry on uh, picking these things apart and, we use, uh, and uh, um, yes, carry on researching. And, uh, and I feel very like uh, isolated with it all in from the archaeological kind of point of view. I'm sure like... I don't know how the in, the industry people who are like keeping planes in the sky using digital X-rays or what they're doing, and I sh assume what they're doing is they never really worry about taking anything out of the Dicon file. <sighs> um, and so this is what I was talking about about the dynamic range. Um, here are the uh, it's one X-ray and it's been the contrast has been turned up and turned down. So with this, the object on the left, it's a shield boss. You can, the conservator would use that image to show the extent of the object. And then with the, uh, with the uh, dynamic range played with, they can start to see much more of the, like, the internal structure and the density of the material in the, in the center. And then, so that, what that does is then start to really potentially like, expolate like how many like uh, files you're going to have because what then is the data share of a dicon file because it's not just one file it's not like here have this photo it's a here if you can't have the dynamic file is what slices of that dynamic file do you want to share and so there's multiple reasons in, for producing files from it and that's when it starts to go completely nuts and that's when I'm like where you just basically our long-term preservation strategy cannot be to produce a slice from the daikon file because you're just going into madness and um and this is where then i'm starting to change the role of the conservator because it can no longer be me saying i select this for the archaeological archive because i can't make these selection decisions um and then i started to go oh okay this is just me going completely nuts then so yeah so daikon files because of that ability to uh, um play with the file and because it takes a long time to take an X-ray, um, it's not often that a, uh, when it comes to selection that a, you may have to deselect de uh, an X-ray file. The, the most likelihood is uh, something like along the lines of if like, they're doing concretions and taking lots of working shots as they bash the bits out. Um, and then I suppose they, might, they probably argue that someone that that's probably of value to the long-term understanding of how you bash that concretion. But, um, but uh, uh, potentially there's like almost like that. It's when you, with x-rays, you actually get a working shot rather than that, that the preservation shot. And, um, but then with the surrogates, we're starting to lose, uh, lose aversion control because um, 
there's just lots of different ways in which you can produce them when you can. Um, but there's lots of different settings you can change. So, uh, uh, so you have to understand how we're um, how you're doing it, and that's when then my file naming convention started to fall apart because we had a file naming convention that basically just uh, attached the X surrogate through the plate name. So it's plate name, and the surrogate is just a sub. A, B, or C of that. And then, but though, what is, is that surrogate? Like, what's the point of that surrogate? And then I start to like, oh God, now I'm exploiting my metadata as well. And so, um, oh, again. right, so metadata. Oh, have I gone over yet? Um, oh, four minutes, excellent. Right, so, uh, so metadata. So with the index, I just um, reviewed it a bit and made it uh, autonomize the data a bit more because it was very much based on. Uh, the design, copy the design from a, a record book where they were just keeping lots of data of the description of the x-ray in one place and I've made it so it's spread out just to annoy them. Um, and then the DICON metadata. So I said already, I've said it's got a metadata in it, some of it's filled in by the machine, but um, uh, da -da 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 -da, what do I need to tell you? Overall, all of those metadata products give me about 180 metadata fields. That's really exciting, isn't it? Like, yeah. And so um, most of them actually come from the DICONT and most of them, I think, are ignorable because they're related to auditing of uh, objects and whether they're um, falling apart. And, uh, uh, and we're not really interested in potentially in that. We're interested in sort of recording, potentially interested in calling the object into the uh, into it and the material and that goes into they just use the language sort of as a the components field so there's that and you can add in more of the parameters that the the human decided parameters of the machinery and I record them in but that then leads me that's then just left me in like limbo because that now isn't a decision for me it's a decision for the culture like the heritage it's the, it's the, yeah, they can make the decision. They, <laughs> it's a decision for the uh, heritage sector um, uh, okay, sorry. Um, it's a, d a decision for the heritage sector. Is what of those fields are we going to use, um, and are we going to use them? Is another uh, thing. So you've, what we're doing is we've got an X-ray, and if you want to find the X-ray, um, uh, use the index file. But that means the metadata is in the DICON file. So if you, the idea is that, oh, if you send a DICON off, anyone will be able to see what it is and what it's got in it. So your component information, or if you're using medical, your patient information will be in there. And so it's embedded, but in Heritage, we don't then have a tool for using that metadata. So for us, it then just creates double handling. And so there's two big things hand, hanging over it, A, double handling, and B, then the fact that in the our sector, we. Um, is uh, is then deciding what where you record patient information, what archaeological information are you going to record in those fields, um, and then that metadata fields into the uh, um, image metadata template, and that's all really painful because X-rays don't match up. But um, glazing over that, and then on to surrogate metadata. Hopefully, for nearly the last slide, surrogate metadata. So. So then that is, when it's a slice of a thing, what is that object? So we're going on to Katie's ideas of like trying to be explicit and how to describe it. And so the surrogate metadata, I suppose, is the same, is linked to the main metadata, so you know what parameters created it and what objects are on it. But then it's the content that is different. Like, so, and that you can use to describe that content potentially for the purpose of which you are, you have played with the dynamic range and what you've done to the dynamic range to change it. And so there's two more metadata for us to create for people to be able to understand and reuse our data. And uh, even if it, that's then, that's the information that might be just on your figure eight of your machine is that you've uh, on your, in your report is understanding the images. And in some respects that almost like reflects back on the DICON file itself. Like what is this DICON file? And our, our metadata for DICON files or X-rays has been very clinical in that it's, it was this object and it was zapped at this parameters, but the whys and that kind of thing are also really important for reuse and that. Oh, I forgot the word interoperability. That was the point of the DICON files. So then we have a big interoperable data set. And that's the same, even applies to the indexes, that like we don't have an, an archaeological standard for how you record x-rays in your index. And so there's a bigger decision to be made on interoperability. There we go. 
that was it. It's been a nightmare. And, um, and then I applied it and I gave it to you. So um, I didn't just create, because I thought, oh no, it's been an eight. It's been a nightmare for me. And so I thought I'd make a nightmare for the Conservatives as well. And so I created a, not just a next, uh, data management plan, I created a whole load of tools for them. And so that's sort of embedded around the data management plan. So we've now got procedures for how you produce surrogates, because you can doc document how to produce a, a high quality one, but without labelling in image J or a low quality one, and that's okay for certain purposes, and the need to produce the, uh, 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 what's it called, the, uh, the, the, yellow, the version of the yellow envelope which tells you it's on the x-ray because no one will see it once you deposited it. I don't, really don't understand that. <laughs> it's not fair. And um, I updated the indexes, I documented their responsibilities that it, and I produced, uh, in, uh, in, uh, within that, then we have selection procedures, like uh, and when, like documenting when you need to do those selection pre procedures, and um, and so yes, at the bottom are the bits that I'm still not happy about. So, what are we going to do with the DICOND metadata? Are we going to use it? Red, we haven't got a tool for using it, so are we going to do it? It probably is for the best that we just did document it anyway, but then, then we just don't do it. And then I'm still not happy with my preservation strategy because I just want one file. Thank you very much. <laughs>